Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today I'm going to talk about linked genes, cis and trans configuration and uh, I would use example with two homologous chromosomes so as you see we have here long arm and uh, short arm this is the same chromosome one probably inherited from the mother side another from the father side so the same chromosome we call such chromosome homologous chromosomes in diploid organism all the chromosomes are present in two copies and of course on both chromosomes we can find uh, the same loci with the same genes in the same order if of course there is no uh, some kind of uh, mutation that may change the order of the genes. So in normal situation, for example, if uh, say here we have gene A on the homologous chromosome, we also have gene A. But uh, due to different mutations, uh, we may have different alleles for the same locus. For example, if we have two uh, variants of the alleles, we may have uh, dominant allele A and recessive allele A. These two alleles in uh, diploid organism can make three combinations. Capital A, capital A, capital A, small a, and small a, small a configuration. So in this locus we can find these three variants if two variants of the alleles exist in the gene pool. Of course there can be more than two variants of the alleles so we may find more different uh, variants of the combinations here. So uh, basically when we talk about linked genes, cis and trans configuration we always talk about also two genes but two genes on the same chromosome so here we have one locus on two different chromosomes and when we talk about uh, link genes we talk about uh, two genes on the same chromosome so for example gene B here and uh, now we can say that uh, these genes are linked because these two genes are on the same chromosome. Of course uh, the second homologous chromosome also may have uh, this gene but uh, for example it can be a recessive gene B. So uh, when we have two dominant genes on the same chromosome we call such situation cis uh, variant or cis configuration uh, probably from the chemistry course uh, you remember that if we have some uh, chemical and we have say R group here and R group here we also call uh, this cis configuration and if we have another molecule with R group here and another R group here, we call such configuration trans configuration. So the same rule applies to chromosome. So uh, when we have two dominant alleles, for example, capital A and capital B, this is going to be this when we have small a and small b on the same chromosome this is also going to be this but when we have uh, for example capital a and small b or small a and capital b on the same chromosome we call this configuration trans configuration what is the importance of this information Imagine that uh, you're a genetist and you want to find distance between genes. 
for example, if you take, uh, let's use model organism with only uh, one set of chromosome, one, uh, two homologous chromosomes, so this is going to be chromosome one, and we have capital A gene here, and uh, capital B gene here, capital A gene here, and capital B gene here, and if we cross with another organism that is going to be uh, also have, that is going to have one chromosome and two copies, and if we would have capital A and capital A here, and capital B and capital B here, uh, resulting progeny uh, also would have the same genotype as parental generation. So no variation we would find here. So capital A and capital B on both chromosomes. In a such a model, we wouldn't be able to tell the distance between gene A and B. Uh, those, uh, of course, be, uh, during meiosis between gene A and B, uh, between these two uh, homologous chromosomes, uh, we may find, for example, using optical microscopy, uh, that uh, there is chiasmata between these two homologous chromosomes, so crossing over happened, but because uh, we don't see any um, new variants in the progeny, we are unable to say how often such uh, event happens. But uh, imagine that we have different situation. Uh, we have uh, the same model organism, but this time one parent has dominant allele A here and capital B here, capital A and capital B here, but the other organism has a small a here, small a here, small b here, and small b here, and 100% of the progeny that result from crossing of these two uh, organisms would produce a uh, genotype that is going to be capital A and capital B, and small a, small b. So one uh, chromosome would be inherited from one parent, doesn't matter which one, because uh, both chromosomes has the same genotype. And no matter which uh, chromosome this one or this one would be inherited by the progeny, uh, both uh, recessive alleles we can find on this chromosome. Now uh, we have to do a test cross with another organism of the known genotype. For example, this can be a genotype that is small a, small a, and small b, small b. And now, uh, during meiosis, Organism on the right here uh, would produce the same genotype, so it doesn't affect our calculations, but this organism uh, may produce different variants, because if uh, crossing over would happen anywhere here, we would find new uh, variants in uh, following generation. We may find capital A and capital B, we may find capital A and small b, small a and capital B, and small a and small b. And as you see, uh, this is going to be parental genotype, this is also going to be a parental genotype, and uh, this two in the middle going to be uh, hybrids. Uh, this is 
going to be due to crossing over between these two chromosomes. So as you see, uh, we have on one chromosome capital A, capital B, and small a, small b on the other chromosome. But we do not see such configurations like these two. So these two result of crossing over. Now, for example, if uh, parental genotype would be 30% uh, here, 30% here, and uh, 20 percent here and 20 percent here we would be able to tell uh, the distance between these two genes the logic is simple the greater distance between gene a and b uh, we would have more variants where crossing over may happen and if for example gene b would be very close to uh, gene a Crossing over between gene A and gene B would happen uh, in uh, much less frequency than uh, when we have a greater distance. So we would see these uh, hybrid genotypes with less frequency, for example, 10%, 10% here. So hybrid genotypes, uh, would uh, their frequency would equal to each other and parental genotypes also would equal to each other so we wouldn't be able to find frequency for example 50% for this genotype 10% uh, for this genotype 20% for this genotype and 20 for this uh, parental genotypes frequency would be the same also because these hybrids are result of the same process of the crossing over between gene A and gene B. So when these two uh, chromosomes exchange arms, we may find new variants uh, of the genes, different alleles on the same chromosome. Once again, this information is important in order to build uh, gene maps. So when uh, you sequence new organism uh, we need these reference points for example if we already know that uh, this chromosome has about 50 or 60 known genes and uh, if we already made such experiments usually it is made with three genes not two genes in order to establish order of the genes on the chromosomes later this information can be used in order to make a precise map of the chromosome when the whole genome of this organism would be sequenced so such reference points are very important so this technique is still in use to find uh, order of the genes on the chromosomes I gave today a little bit excessive information, uh, probably I can make a very short video just uh, giving you this information that this is cis form and this is trans form. But I hope this video would help you understand uh, modern techniques, that modern techniques is not just pressing a button and you would get the whole sequence of the new organism. Uh, usually this uh, also um, means that before you sequence the whole uh, genome you have to do a lot of different crossing over, find the order of the genes on the uh, chromosomes and then uh, you would be able to build a gene map of the chromosomes of this particular organism. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.